We're going to work on solving trig equations, part two. Um, and this is just a couple different methods on how to solve your trig equations. Um, the first method is using a single trig function. So for example, if I had sine squared x minus sine x plus 1 equals cosine squared x. So your goal here is to get it so you only have the sine or only have the cosine. Um, because I've got a sine squared and a regular sine, I'm going to go ahead and change that cosine. Uh, cosine squared, we know, has to be 1 minus sine squared. So now that we've changed that into 1 minus sine squared, I'm going to rewrite this so that I have the sine of x by itself, or as close to possible as I can. So with this, I'm going to go ahead and move this 1 minus sine squared x over. So when I move this over, I get 2 sine squared of x minus sine x. And then that's going to actually eliminate the 1s, and that equals 0. So now, this is actually going to be like factoring. Uh, actually, not. it's not going to be like it. It is factoring. I'm going to factor out a sine x, and I'm left with 2 sine x minus 1, and that equals 0. So now I need to think of it in terms of, well, how is this going to equal 0? So for instance here, if I have the sine of x times this blue part, and that has to equal 0. Well, I know in order for it to equal 0 that the blue part probably has to be 0, or vice versa. This also has to equal 0, because you're multiplying it by something that equals 0. So both of those are technically factors. So I have the sine of x equals 0. And then I have the 2 sine x minus 1 equals 0. I simplify this until I get an x sine of x equals. This one on the left I already have done, but on the right I need to work on this. So I've got 2 sine of x equals a positive 1 divided by 2. Sine x equals 1 half. So now that I've got this broken down, this isn't my final answer. You need to find the degree measure of when sine of x equals 0. So what that means is you need to go to your unit circle in order to figure out where sine of x equals 0. And there are two possible choices. You have 0 or pi for this one. And then on the right side, you need to figure out, OK, where, where is it um, a half? And your answer is going to be pi over 6 or 5 pi over 6. Um, and this is, I'm just sticking with from 0 to pi interval. This could be different depending on your interval, but like I said, I'm just going to stick with the upper half of 0 to pi. Um, there are times, though, so this is rewriting with a single trig function, because we stuck with just a sign. There are times, though, when you need to solve by squaring. So for instance, if I have secant x plus 1 equals tangent x. So when I'm looking at this and I'm looking you know, at the tangent and the secant, the only time that they're ever actually related or in an identity together is when they're squared. So this is a perfect time to square them. So when I square the left side, I want to write down that secant x plus 1 twice. And that's so I don't forget how to square properly. OK, so I've got secant squared of x plus secant x plus secant x plus 1 equals tangent squared of x. I'm going to go ahead and combine my like terms.
Now, I'm looking at this. Okay, I've done my squaring. Done. But this isn't going to get me very far. However, if I rewrite it with only one trig combination, I'm probably more likely to figure it out. So I'm going to rewrite that tangent squared of x because I've got the secant twice already. So I've got secant squared of x plus 2 secant x plus 1. And that's going to equal secant squared of x minus 1. Again, I'm going to move everything so it's all on one side. Uh, the secant squared of x, you get rid of it, so you're left with 2 secant x plus 2 equals 0. Nope, that's not right. Uh, yes, it is. So I take that back. <laughs> um, so now I'm going to factor out that 2 and I'm left with secant x plus 1 equals 0. Set it up again. Secant x plus 1 has to equal 0. Subtract that 1. Secant x equals negative 1. Okay, so this one's a little bit tricky. You've got to remember secant is really 1 over cosine of x. Well, okay, technically this is my fraction of negative 1 over 1. So if I were to flip this, I'd have cosine x still equals negative 1. Uh, but with that, you need to go then to your unit circle and figure out where cosine equals negative 1. Again, I'm limiting myself to the interval of 0 to pi. And I know that pi is my answer. So we've worked with five different ways in order to solve trig functions. Uh, we've done it by isolating a trig function, you know, by factoring. We've also done it using the square root of each side, like I said, the factoring, uh, rewriting it as a single trig function, and now by squaring both sides. Um, key here is make sure you know what type of interval that you're supposed to be on whether it's 0 to pi or 0 to 2 pi, because that'll change the number of answers that you could potentially have.